So my first experience hearing about sugar dating was from 10, like 15 years ago when I lived in Las Vegas. So I hadn't, at that time, I didn't hear of the term sugar baby or sugar daddy, but I knew of attractive women who had older rich guys like paying their rent, uh, buying them cars, paying their car payment, giving them money, things like that. So that was my first time being exposed to the idea of like, oh, if you have money, you can date uh, some really attractive girls and you just use that as a leverage point the way other other people might use uh, their looks or muscles or being extremely charming or charismatic or something like that. It's just one more lever that you can push in terms of dealing with uh, dealing with relationships, dealing with women. So then fast forward to about a couple of years ago. So the first time I ever heard of like seeking.com or sugar daddy meat and there being websites especially dedicated to uh, sugar babies and sugar daddies and that type of relationship. The first time that I heard about that was probably like 2019, 2020. And I heard about it from, this is an old ass podcast that you'll have to dig it up. I heard about it from Myron Gaines before he was famous. He went on the Aaron Clary podcast in like 2019, 2020. And that was the first time like I ever really heard about seeking or anything like that. Then the person that really brought it um, to the forefront of my mind was Coach Greg Adams. It's like I'm a big Coach Greg Adams guy. I have uh, both of his books all right here. Actually, I have this one. Shout out to Coach Greg Adams. But I have uh, De-Evolution, which is his second book. I have The Free Agent Lifestyle somewhere else in here. And I, I got him on Audible or like the audio book and the physical book. So shout out to him. But he said um, he started talking about seeking and sugar dating and things like that. And that's when I finally got really introduced to the idea and thinking, okay, well, maybe this is something I should try. At the time, I was um, a licensed general contractor. So that's my background. My background is construction, blue collar in the trades. I got a general's con- general contractor's license. I started my own business. And at the time, um, I was cashing some really big checks. I was starting to make money. And it seemed like, okay, well, I have money. I don't have that much time. I am, inter- I am frustrated with dating apps. I am inter- interested in meeting women that I'm more attracted to. Let me check this out. So that was basically where I was at with this whole thing. And this was around 2020, 2021. So my first time uh, just going on one of these websites, I think, okay, you know what? Actually, this is what happened. I was turning 39. So I was 38 years old, self-employed as a general contractor, making really good money. And I'm like, you know, hey, my birthday's next month. Um, I'll just go on there and I'll see what's going on. I go on this website. I enter my bio. So you put your age, you put your your income, your net worth, your race, your height, weight, all this other stuff. And as I'm entering this information in, I also wrote up a really short, quick bio. I made a video about how to create bios on sugar daddy sites, and it's called um, something like get your dream sugar baby to message you first. And this is how I know that I have something good because this. let me tell you the story of what happened. So I go on there, and basically I just wanted to put like what I was looking for, a little bit about who I am. At the time, I was like a business owner working in a construction Da, 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 da. I liked skiing, hiking, I'm real outdoorsy, and what I was looking for. So I was looking for someone uh, fit, beautiful, nurturing, spontaneous, somebody who loved intimacy, somebody who looked good in a bikini, somebody who liked uh, getting dressed up and going to dinner, and also maybe just chilling and like getting tacos and uh, playing video games, something like that. So I put that in there. Somebody who likes to chill, likes to play Xbox, likes to go out skiing, likes to get dressed up and be fancy, likes to just chill at the house in comfortable clothes. And this is even before I put up pictures. So I had a bio, I had my stats on there, but I didn't have pictures. And as I'm kind of like going through, looking at photos and trying to choose what photos to to select to put on the website, I already had a message from, I got my first message. So my first message ever on a sugar site, even before I had any pictures. And the message was something like, hey, you sound interesting, or hey, I'm curious about, you know, your profile sounds really, really cool and interesting. You know, what are you up to? Oh, this is what she said. What are your plans for the weekend? Because it was like a Friday. I'm making this profile. Are you up to anything exciting this weekend? So I was like, oh, hey, I have some work to do, this and that. And I, this, I'm brand new to sugar dating. I have no idea what to do, how to do it. I have a vague idea of how it's supposed to work and what's, what's supposed to happen. But I don't really know what I'm doing. So I just basically I just treated it like a regular dating app in terms of like conversation and how I would schedule dates. Because I had been I had gotten quite good at like making conversation on dating apps, scheduling dates, scheduling meetups with women, uh, even getting to in- intimacy if they wanted that. So so I felt pretty comfortable with my skills of dealing with women in that way. So we messaged back and forth. Long story short, it got to the point where I, you know, we were messaging and had a good rapport set up. We exchanged numbers, we're texting. As, and then uh, I was just like, well, hey, I would like to see you. 
And this is one, one thing that I recommend guys do. Just ask an open-ended question. I would like to see you. Can you tell me how to set that up? And this is going to give her the chance, a sugar baby on these websites, give her the chance to talk about what she wants and what she's expecting in terms of y'all meeting up. So I asked the open-ended question really because I didn't know. Like I, I didn't actually know what I was supposed to do or... And that's why I'm making these videos. Because if you get into sugar dating, at least right now, maybe five years from now, if you're watching this video, five years from now, this is all common knowledge. But at the time, and then especially right now, I think people don't really know exactly what goes where. So I just said, hey, um, I want to meet you. Can you tell me how to do that? And she said, okay, for, uh, you know, for us to just meet up. And I think I was really specific that I just wanted us to meet up. I wanted to meet her and talk to her. I wasn't interested. So she was beautiful. This girl happened to just be my type. And, um, I mean, I have, have dated lots of different types of women. I've lived overseas. So I've dated interracially, internationally. I, I think all people, all women can be beautiful in different ways. Um, but probably my type, at least at that time that I was really, I had always had a crush on Kelly Rowland, right? Uh, sort of slim, thick, dark skin, pretty, you know, just like real cute and feminine and stuff like that. I just love that. And this particular girl, let's call her, let's, we'll just call her Kelly. Kelly, uh, just look, she looked like that. So she had like five or six pictures of on her bio and she looked like just like, you know, a chocolate sister like that, long legs, pretty smile, all this stuff. So I wanted to meet her and I'm saying, Hey, what's going on? Can we meet up? So she said, Hey, and I just, and I was pointing out, like I'm pointing out, I just put, you know, can we just like meet up and have some drinks and see how we vibe? Like I, I didn't really even want to move into being intimate with her like right away. I really just was trying to like get my feet wet and see what happens. And to this day, I always meet up with the person first, at least at least once before we'll move into like being intimate with each other. Um, I'm not in a rush for that. I, I love sex. Obviously, everybody probably enjoys it. But to me, I really want to like meet the person and have a good vibe. One thing that I've found as I've like gotten older, I'm 41, is that like the mechanical, that mechanical feeling of friction that feels so good, that's like a really small part of sex, of what sex is and intimacy is. Really, it's also about your connection with that person, you know, your chemistry, touching them, smelling them. You can smell their hair, their perfume, their shampoo. She can smell your cologne. Like you're being in the moment in this very intimate way with somebody. And that friction, that friction, you could do that by yourself, right? You could get, you can actually get that feeling by yourself, but sex with another person is this whole other whole thing. So I really like to have, take time and let it, just let it build up. Even if it's just like one or two days, right? Maybe we meet up, have a couple drinks, get to know each other, sort of laugh and feel comfortable. And then this, the next time that we see each other, we'll, we can, you know, go to the next level. This is how I like to do it. So anyway, even though I have had uh, one night stands in my life, I've had one night stands in my private life, like non-sugaring, and it could be fine. That could be exciting, but I still like, I like there to be some backstory there. So anyway, she's like, yeah, to meet up uh, for a meet and greet, um, it's like 250. It was like 250 or something like that, which was kind of high. She might have said three. And I actually know that, because we had talked about that I didn't know any other sugar babies. That was my first time sugar dating. And she said a number that I thought was a little bit high. Uh, I think she, she might have said 300. And I know that that was high, but I also was kind of like, all right, just what, you know what I'm saying? This is my first go around. I'll let you charge me like a, you know, whatever, uh, inconvenience fee or something, just because you got to show me, take me, walk me through this. So I was like, yeah, cool. So whatever. And another one of my platitudes that I say is I don't argue with sugar babies about money. She can say what she wants and then I can say, hey, I'm not comfortable with that. I might come back with be like, okay, well, I might have said like nowadays, if that were to happen, if I were to to ask a woman that and she said a number I didn't like I might say well I'm really more comfortable with 200 and if she said no I would leave it at that I'm not trying to haggle and bargain or whatever we either agree or we don't agree I don't argue about money or haggle with women so she said 300 I think it was which I thought was high I was like whatever I knew that was high I didn't care we met up so she was pretty so the main thing what I wanted is to see how I would feel in how how would that feel what would, would it be like to be sitting there with dinner at dinner with a sugar baby and we know each other in this context and we have this type of relationship, is it going to feel weird? Is it going to feel awkward? Am I going to like, I just wanted to know what it was going to feel like. So I wanted to try that out. So we ended up meeting at a place that I was very, very familiar with. It was a bar that I like to go to. They have really good drinks and um, sitting at the bar, if you want to order food, you can order food and they have a really good uh, menu and the food there is really good. So we meet up and we just have some drinks and she was 
she was really, really attractive, tall. She was wearing this like really cute outfit. Her belly was out, um, you know, breast pushed up, and she was more slim fit. She didn't have like super big uh, chest, but just pushed up nice, and she just looked pretty. Long hair, um, just a nice bubbly person. She's probably watching this right now. Hi, but she looked great. Um, and the conversation was just totally natural and normal. I met her outside. Actually, I had to park her car for her. This is such a funny story. I ended up having to park her car for her because we met at a bar downtown. It was pretty crowded, and the only parking spots available were like on the street where you have to parallel park. And so she was outside thinking, well, can you? She's like, well, I can't find a parking spot. I was like, there's parking spots. I, I know there are. I walk outside, and she was in the car, and I poke my head. This is our first time ever meeting. I poke my head in the window, and I was like, hey, why don't you just park right there? And she looked so sheepish and shy. She's like, I don't know how to parallel park. <laughs> so I was like, what? And uh, she was like 25, 26 at the time. So a grown woman. She just never, I guess, got comfortable with it. So I was like, well, let me drive. So we, she gets out, gets on the passenger side. I get behind the wheel, and I parallel parked her car for her. And then we just walked into the restaurant together. So some of the things that I remember about this evening is that she was so comfortable and at ease and like gregarious. She's a, I interpret her to be like an extroverted person, like very friendly, open. Because she was so comfortable and at ease, I was comfortable. So it honestly just felt like any other, any other date that I've ever been on. Probably if you would have been sitting across the room, you would have thought that it was just like a first date from Tinder or something like that. Mostly because I didn't, she's like I said, mid twenties. At the time, I was 38. I didn't think that there was probably a really huge age difference, like very visible um, at that time. And uh, it was just super natural. It was just a really, it was a natural experience. I have a super natural feeling experience, not super natural like spiritual. But um, yeah, we just had a, we had a chat. We had a drink. How are you? What are you doing? Uh, are you in school? Okay, cool. What for? I think we had talked about some of this stuff in messages, but just kind of getting to know each other. What'd you do today? regular regular conversation of your first date with somebody i thought we had instant chemistry it was really cool she was just a fun person like a relaxed fun person funny silly she like made a couple little jokes and teased me a little bit so we had great rapport right off of the bat uh we got some drinks had some tequila we end up it was going well so i was like well do you want to get some food she was down for that we end up uh sharing like uh, a plate like steak and things like that just kind of like sharing that while we had drinks and talked. And after about an hour or two, it was getting late. It's kind of like midnight. I had to work in the morning. So I was like, well, let me walk you back to the car. So I ended up walking her to uh, back to her car and I was getting kind of tipsy and things like that. So I started just kissing her. I just honestly pushed her up against the car and started kissing her. This is probably not something I should have done, but like I said, number one, we had excellent chemistry. I could tell that we were, we were feeling it. She was like touching my arm, touching my thigh. Oh, you're so funny. You know when it's like the right moment. So I push her up against the car. I start kissing her. And uh, I was, we had done some shots. So I was a little buzzed by this time too. And I started like putting my hands inside of her jacket and all this stuff. And uh, we're just on the street in front, like up against her car. So after a certain point, I'm like, okay, let me calm down. Like what's, what's going on here? I started realizing, okay, the, the tequila got me acting crazy. So I just back up. I'm like, okay, you know, let me let, let, me let you go. I knew I had to work in the morning. I knew what it was. Like, I'm not trying to do all that. So I ended up letting her go. Uh, we had done like the PPM. Oh, I think that's when I, we did like the PPM. I think I just did it on Cash App. And um, I just gave her a hug and I was like, hey, you know, just text me when you get home. Hope you get home safely. And I'll talk to you later. So she's like, okay. Yeah, da, da. So she left. I come home. I live near there now far. So within like 20 minutes or a half an hour, she had texted me. Hey, I had an amazing time tonight. You know, I think you're really handsome. You're really funny. I had a good time with you. And, uh, she, and she also said, you know, I love how aggressive you were when you like pushed me up against the car. It was so hot, da, 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 which I liked. I'm sorry that y'all can hear. If you can hear my dog barking, it's just the same, the same fucking dog just being on 10 like he always is. Anyway, she was like, yeah, I love how aggressive you were. Like, you know, you're really sexy, da, 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 da. And when, when can I see you again? So it was a lot like any other, any other Tinder hinge date, things like that, that I've ever been on. And so when guys in the comments who have not done sugar dating or, and, or they're not comfortable with women try to tell me, oh, I wouldn't want to go out on a hot girl with a hot girl if she's just dating me for money because of X, Y, and Z reason. That's not my experience. Like I'm comfortable with myself. I feel good about making, being able to make women comfortable. I'm not a super unattractive person. I'm definitely not Idris Elba good looking, but if you have like 
And somebody else, another guy, shout out to a guy who left a good comment. I might do a whole video about this. If you know how to handle yourself around women and you're not a dork, you should have a, be able to have a good time sugar dating. It's really just a cheat code and a way to kind of speed up getting results with maybe better looking women than you would normally meet on a dating app. There's a lot of women on dating apps that are not that good looking. I'm sorry. Um, and there's a lot of women on dating apps that are like super entitled or not just maybe not very pleasant to be around. But when you flip the script and do sugar dating, you're often interacting with maybe younger or more attractive or just more pleasant women because you also have something to offer too. So she's young and beautiful, but you're also successful and mature and experienced and things like that. And so now you're meeting at a more equal level. And I really think that that's actually the big secret of why sugar dating can feel so much more natural. And it's feels just, it just feels a lot better. I think both people are generally happier because you have equity. A beautiful woman doesn't have equity with a guy her same age, like a beautiful 25 year old and a 25 year old guy that's like an uh, assistant manager at Planet Fitness are not on the same level. And the same with a man who is 40 and a woman who's 40. I'm not going to get into it, but they're, we're, they're not the same. They're not equally matched. So that's why sugar dating is good. That's one of the beauty, the beautiful parts of it is that you meet up at a point where your interest in your attraction, your interest level in each other and what you can give to the other person is equal and it's equal and it's complementary, kind of like a yin and a yang, right? Youth and beauty and ambition and whatever things she wants to do in her in her life. And then you have experience, success, you might have business contacts, you have money, you can help, you can show her things and give her insights into things that she can do and handle herself. And it's just improve her life. It's not just, in my opinion, my sugar relationships have not just been about uh, exchanging sex for money, it, which is illegal, first of all. It's illegal in the United States of America to do that. Um, but it hasn't been just a transactional feeling experience, at least for me. And I think it's part of the, the reason is who I am, what I'm doing, my intentions behind it, and things like that. So if y'all have had different experiences, let me know in the comment box below. That's what I wanted. I'm not telling you that you have to like, have some deep spiritual connection with a sugar baby. And that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I had chemistry. We had a good time. We ended up seeing each other several times after that. So that was just like the first time that we met. We ended up hanging out maybe one other time uh, before she went out of town. And then she came back in town and we were seeing each other after that for a little bit. So that was my first experience with a sugar baby. Catch you on the next one. Peace.